Welcome. In good newspaper articles about election polls, they will not just tell you how many votes each party is projected to get, but also what the error is. So the articles could say that party X would get 15 plus or minus two seats. So what does this plus or minus mean? In essence, the polling company has asked a lot of people about their preference and used their answers to estimate the number of seats the party would get. Since the measurements contain randomness, these results are not exact. Therefore, the polling company can only give an estimate of the number of seats a party is going to get, and not the true value. The plus-minus part is meant to give an idea of the size of the error. Basically, they are saying, with high probability, the number of seats this party would get will lie in the interval from 13 to 17. This interval is called a confidence interval. Every time you measure something, you get a slightly different result, based on thousands of little effects. Try standing twice in a row on the same scale to measure your weight. And you'll almost always get two different results. I know people who take the minimum of these two results as their true weight, but you can make better inferences. Suppose the scale is such that the result it gives is normally distributed with mean your actual weight. The standard deviation sigma equals half a kilogram. If you measure your weight twice in a row, it gives the results 60.1 and 60.9 kilograms. The average of these two numbers, 60.5 kilograms, is an estimate for your true weight. But what is the error? Well, since you don't know your true weight, you cannot calculate the error exactly. But as we will calculate in a minute, a 95% confidence interval of your weight is the interval from 59.81 to 61.19. That is, if you were to repeat the experiment of weighing yourself twice and then calculating such an interval many times over, in 95% of the cases, the interval you calculate will contain your true weight. Let us now see how you can calculate this interval. We know that the average of two normally distributed random variables has a normal distribution itself, with the same mean mu, but the standard deviation of the average equals the standard deviation of the scale divided by square root of 2. In this case, 1 over square root of 8. Thus z equals the square root of 8 times the average minus mu has a standard normal distribution. From a table of the normal distribution, you can read off that the probability that z is between minus 1.96 and plus 1.96 equals 95%. This condition can be rewritten as saying that mu is between the average minus 0.69 and the average plus 0.69. Plugging in the outcome of the average of our measurements gives a 95% confidence interval for mu. To construct an interval, you need a lower and an upper bound, both of which depend on your measurements xi. In general, if the measurements are given by the random variables capital XI, whose distribution depends on the parameter theta. We can define two sample statistics, ln and un, dependent on these XI, as lower and upper bound of an interval. If the probability that this interval contains theta equals gamma for all values of theta, then we say that the realization of this interval is a 100 gamma percent confidence interval for theta. In the example of the election polls, the theta is the percentage of people voting for one party. In the example of the scale, the theta is your true weight mu. Let's get back to the interpretation of the confidence interval. Notice that the interval you construct is random. Every time you weigh yourself twice and construct a 95% confidence interval, you will obtain a different interval. 
on the slide, you see what can happen. Supposing you actually weigh 60 kilograms and use the scale from before. 20 confidence intervals are constructed. Most of the time, the confidence interval you construct will contain the true value of 60 kilograms. But in about 1 in 20 cases, the 95% confidence interval you construct will not contain your true weight. Indeed, in this case, the second and fifth confidence intervals from the right do not contain 60. Why not exactly 1 out of 20? Well, of course the 95% is the probability that one of these confidence intervals contains 60. So it does not mean that exactly one from every 20 confidence intervals does not contain 60. Just as you do not always throw exactly one six with six dice. Typically, you do not know the true value of the variance. In class, you will learn how you can calculate the confidence interval if your measurements are normally distributed with unknown variants, and in other cases. Before class, I would like you to try the following problem. Suppose you weigh yourself three times on the scale and get the results 70.1, 70.2 and 70.5. What is a 99% confidence interval for your weight? Good luck!